Please welcome to the stage, Vice President of Sales, VMA Media, Chelsea Matthew. Good morning. Hi, everybody. As they said, I'm Chelsea Walker, or Chelsea Matthew. I finally changed my last name after my husband, you know, complained for two years, and I keep forgetting. So I'm Chelsea Matthew. Um, welcome, and we're so happy to have you here. Um, I, we like to kick this off. It's a networking event. We want you to talk to each other and, and get to know each other better. So why don't you all stand up and say hello to someone you don't know? Just welcome someone and, and uh, say hello. All right. Excellent. Okay, cool. So there's awesome amount of time throughout. We get to get to know each other even better than uh, saying hello. All right. Thanks, everybody. So as mentioned, uh, you're going to hear from some fantastic speakers. There's going to be uh, plenty of opportunities to discuss um, different topics throughout. We have some great breakout sessions later today where you'll have uh, an entire group-wide discussion. We encourage you to participate. That's what this is all about. Um, as you guys go through the event, if you have feedback and it's awesome and you love it, Tell our awesome co-hosts, Serena and uh, Nick, who have worked so hard to help us put this together. And if you have any, I don't know, things you want to complain about, find me or my team. So uh, we're here for you. That's what this is about. Um, and without further ado, I'd love to introduce our co-hosts. Um, again, they've worked quite hard to um, help us put together some fantastic programming. So let's welcome to the stage Serena Duff and Nick Childs. Thank you so much. Such a gentleman. Hello, I'm hello, Serena. Hello. I'm Nick. Nick. Welcome, everybody. Um, in the true spirit of, it's great to be a co-host here. Uh, I come from the creative side, technically. Um, you're from the media side, technically. I think a lot of the talk will be about why do we differentiate all this stuff, and it should overlap and integrate. And in the true spirit of that, Serena's going to take it away, and then I'm going to talk to you guys, and we'll take totally separate here. For we, media used to be the last bit of, um, we got five minutes in a two hour meeting when creative and media were married. And now look, media is uh, kicking things off. So you thank go. you. Um, so we're here for the next day and a half to talk about the big idea. Three little words that when they're by themselves on their own, you know, they don't mean much. But when they're put together, it really, uh, you know, in, it instills excitement but it also can instill fear in the most seasoned marketing executives. So whether you're a CMO, whether you run media for the brand, whether you're on the agency side or whether you're on the sell side, and raise your hand if you've heard this, we've all heard, you know, I need a big idea. Who, who hasn't heard that in their career? Yeah, so, you know, that's where your palms start to sweat a little bit, your hearts start to race, but there's a lot of excitement in creating a big idea. And a big idea isn't a one-off. It's not just a snazzy tactic that lives by itself. Um, you know, it is something that, at the end of the day, when done right, the big idea is transformative. It changes attitudes, it changes behavior, and it changes beliefs in a brand. It also makes the cash register ring. Um, it, it, it incites sales and it incites brand love. And that's why in today's world, the big idea is still so important. Um, so the question, I kind of just gave it away. The question we're gonna kick around today is in an era where marketers are really focused on data and performance marketing, is there still room for the big idea? And I'm really looking forward to that discussion and Nick's gonna 
delve a little bit deeper into it today. Um, from my own perspective, I think the big idea has kind of lessened over the years. I don't really get that call as often as I used to saying I need a big idea. Um, I think data and digital and everything that we're doing in that space has, has really just been on the rise, as we all know. That's, that's pretty evident. Um, and the need for attention-grabbing work, I think it's kind of lessened a little bit. And, and, it, and it shouldn't be lessening. I'm not trying to say that brands aren't still doing amazing work. There's a lot of brands out there that are really defining what it means to have a big idea. Um, but I think lately, maybe fewer and far between, the big idea hasn't been center stage. And I, over the next day and a half, I really want to be able to talk about that and how we bring the big idea back to center stage. Um, that said, big ideas and, and data don't have to be mutually exclusive. We're in this, it, you know, it used to be you had the big idea, and then you took the big idea, and you just inserted that into all the different channels that were out there. But today, when you have the big idea, and I throw that term around so loosely, it's so hard to actually develop a really meaningful big idea, um, it has to be crafted and customized for all those different channels. Um, and when you think about how a big idea can really start and, and trickle into the subconscious of culture, that's a lot of that is done in the digital space. It's done in the social space. Um, it's done in the mobile space, not just on you know, the broad video canvas that is out there. And the two should be able to work really, really beautifully together. Um, I, for one, believe in the power of the big idea. Um, I don't think it's gone. I don't think um, data has taken over. And you know, I think there's nothing like a big brand-defining idea that connects to the hearts and minds of our consumers. And that's what we are all really looking for in this day and age. Um, so with that, I really believe that, that creativity trumps data. Doesn't mean data isn't important, I'm not saying that. Um, but I think in order to maximize what we're doing in a data-led world and maximize what we're doing in a performance-led world, it has to be creatively led. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my co-host. Great. He's going to take us through a little more in-depth the creative Thank you angle so much. I'm going to come over here so I can see some stuff to keep me on time a little bit. All right, I'm, move, I'm moving this way. Um, I'm, I'm exiting. It's this such way. a great intro to what we talk about, and I'm going to selfishly take this into my space, um, the noun of creative, which I may talk about a little bit, but the idea of the return of the big idea. Um, and what that means. A lot of stuff we're going to talk about over the next couple of days, we've already been started, our brand values, connecting to culture, idea over platforms, how do we measure success, how do we get brands and agencies and platforms to come together and work together on the same page. And I think Serena and I are going to do our best to try and connect things. Um, I promise everyone in every session, though, will at some point get to see the Colin Kaepernick slide about Nike. So that's coming in my presentation. It's ubiquitous nowadays. Um, Make sure I got this. So we're gathered here in a beautiful place, and of course we've got you stuck inside, and now I get a wax rhapsodic for a few minutes, um, and hopefully not drone on, and I'll try to entertain you guys with a bunch of quotes, that's my crutch, um, and a couple of stories that I've heard or read recently as I try to put pieces together, and it's a little bit messy up here. I look at a lot of disparate things, and I try to put those pieces together. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that today is start off by asking three questions. Um, I don't have the answer to these questions, and the most important thing for me as a creative is to proclaim my ignorance and really not know things and try to get better at things. So, so let's start with three questions. The first question is, what is the big idea? We all talk about that. We're going to be talking about that for the next two or three, three days, the, the return to the big idea. Um, but before we go back to our data and programmatic grind, what does the big idea mean? Can we start to better define what we all sort of or kind of mean, uh, even a little bit, uh, and agree that the big idea is something we can return to rather than just executions? The second question is the big one I just mentioned a minute ago, is what is creative? This is an industry that uses that as a noun. I get the great pleasure of welcoming Lucy Walker, an incredible film director, to the stage next and talking to her 
um, she would never call herself a creative, right? In that industry, in the music industry, in the play industry, you have people who are executive producers and writers and directors that didn't use that word creative. We're all here, we all creative in a certain way. How can we be creative together to get to the idea because it's going to take all of us? And how has that been beaten out of us? How is creativity? How has the big idea been beaten out of it? The easy answer is these words we throw around, buzz, uh, buzzwords like programmatic and digital and all these different things. Um, but it's been pushed out of us from grade school to high school to college to graduate beyond. We're all brilliant people and we've kind of forgotten to chase our own big ideas in our lives. So this is my kind of rev us up conversation here for a few minutes to get us fired back up and to answer these three questions to talk about them, three questions, three answers. I, I think we get to the big idea through three things. For me, it's curiosity, grit, and fear. Let's start with curiosity. This is what I try to live by. Um, I chase random, strange assortments, as I said, of quotes, of ideas, of too many things on Twitter's thread, uh, and try to figure out how to put all that together in my head. Um, being curious, admitting that I'm ignorant about things. Charles Duhigg, who's a great writer for the Times and a best-selling author, calls modern creativity being an innovation broker, which is to put together disparate things in a new and unique way. There's nothing new, but that's our challenge. How do we be curious and find these things we don't expect to connect and then actually connect them together? Um, here are three quick stories of people who have chased curiosity of thousands of stories. The first is a guy named David Hyatt who was working in advertising and he did one project but then he did another one. He built a jeans company. Has anybody heard of Hyatt Jeans? It's a tiny jeans company now getting bigger in the corner of Wales, way down on the coast like here. Um, it was actually a jeans factory that made most of the jeans for Europe and they closed the whole thing. And David's idea was to reopen that jeans factory through doing bespoke denim at the highest level and his goal is to put every single person and more back to work. It's a fascinating story. I would encourage you to visit his site, follow all of the content that they push out. He's been incredibly successful chasing his curiosity. And I ask you to think about stories like this, unexpected ways. Where can your curiosity take you? Or Massimo Bottura, who runs Osteria Francesca in Modena an unexpected town where he's built the most successful, best restaurant in the world. Has anybody seen his story on Chef's Table? Yeah, so you know the story, right? His quest for curiosity chased him to one day see somebody spill a lemon tart in the kitchen and see it broken on the floor and to take that broken lemon tart and call it, oops, I dropped the lemon tart and have it become the signature disc dish of your restaurant and put it on the menu and then task yourself over years to see where fearless curiosity could lead you to create every dish in a very unexpected way, to do things that nobody else in the world is doing, and after a long time, have your restaurant become voted, last year, the best restaurant in the world. His curiosity led him to wonder if he could serve food totally differently than anybody else in the world, in this tiny Italian city that was off the beaten track, where can your curiosity lead you? or Agnes Varda, a filmmaker that Lucy knows. In her 90th year, her latest big idea was to collaborate with an artist named JR who takes pictures of strangers and then prints them out in these massive formats. And she made a documentary about traveling with him across France and doing this for strangers. And it opened up a can and it was nominated for an Academy Award last year and she's 90 years old because she's alive and she's curious. Where can your curiosity take you? Successful people, a lot of work, chasing paths. What does that take? That takes grit. Um, to be that successful is a different level, but it took one thing to get them there. It took grit. And this is defined for me in the same way Angela Duckworth defines it in her book, Grit. It's perseverance. It's hard fucking work. It's passion. It's focus. But mainly, I'd say, it's having a lot of ideas. It's not having a single idea. This... These are two things in my house. So this is a poster that I liked. It's a black sheep, if you can't see it, behind the words question everything. And I didn't intend to do this, but this hangs in our front doorway. So you walk in the front hall of our house, the front door, and that's the first thing that greets you. 
tells you to question everything. When we redid the kitchen, my wife wonderfully and un unexpectedly had this um, scribed over the back door, and Noli Tamare means be not afraid. So that's our kind of Friday night lights, clear hearts, minds, whatever the quote is, tap it as you walk out the door. You walk in, you're told to question everything. You walk out for me, for the kids, for our lives, for work, question everything and be not afraid. There's lots of paths, there's lots of ideas that we can chase. And we need to know, very importantly, when to get off the wrong path when it's headed toward a cliff. And it's hard for me not to constantly think things are headed toward a cliff nowadays. There's so many things that we're act asked to connect um, while we also come up with this return to the big idea. There's data, there's strategy, there's make sure it works across all the different channels and all the different platforms. There's making sure it has the correct ROI. How do we make sure the big idea is right? Well, since I heard this story on a podcast, I call it the football aspect. Doug Peterson is the head coach of the Eagles who won the Super Bowl last year, and he said this in a podcast called Hidden Brain, and I pulled over on the side of the highway, I had to write it down. There's tons of data available, right? It can be overwhelming and take you away from the football aspect. But you just try to take a little slice of it and use it to your benefit for that, that week, that's all. You just need to take a slice of this and then go do something, that's all. That's a big ask. Where do we start? I'd ask you guys today and over the next two days, ask yourself, what's your aspect? What's your football aspect? Or in the cliche term that everybody's chasing nowadays, let's change one word and ask you, what's your purpose? I don't know if it has to be lofty and change the world. I just think it has to be honest and at the core of what you want to do next. To have something for you're aiming for and know why you're going there. Ask yourself, what's that football aspect? Ask yourself, what's your purpose? And this takes us to the ubiquitous demanded slide of Cap and Nike. I'm not gonna talk about the campaign. I'm gonna talk about where we are quickly nowadays in terms of being in a fractured, difficult landscape. In times of trouble is when we need to be rebels with big ideas most. That's when we have success through ideas, when we can be rebels in times of trouble. So let's get at it. But it's not easy to get at it, right? It's really, really scary. We're afraid of failing, and rightfully so. I'd argue we should all be more stoic and ask what's the worst that could possibly happen um, if we chase overcoming our fears. I think that's the single most important thing that we can do, is say, what's the worst that could happen here? Is it risky? Is it dangerous? Honestly, for us, probably not that risky or dangerous. It's not as risky as a Alex Hanold free climbing El Cap, where one foothold and one handhold means certain death. Jimmy Chin just shot an incredible documentary called Free Solo about this. But when facing fear, when pitching ideas for us, keeping this in mind that we have to summon our clearest concentration and move forward not back is critical, and it's hard. But the good news is, and bear with me, that we're hardwired to be more curious than afraid. In the, 19, in the 1860s, a scientist named Alfred Brehm did an experiment. He put this covered box of snakes into a cage with a few monkeys. And when the monkeys lifted the lid, they were terrified because that's the normal reaction of a monkey to a snake, right? They dropped the lid back down and scrambled away. But here's the thing, they, the next thing they did was so unexpected that Charles Darwin repeated that same experiment 15 years later because he didn't believe that it happened. The monkeys, in spite of their fear, couldn't resist going back and reopening the box to take a second look. Now, smart or stupid, it proves and has been repeated over a hundred times with a hundred different animals, and every single time, in every case, the animals couldn't resist their curiosity. Curiosity overpowers fear. The snake might bite you, okay, I'm not gonna get into that conversation right now, but we should understand that at the core, our curiosity lets us to chase fear and overcome it. But what are the steps to get there? There's four things for me that I'm interested in lately, and the first is that comfort zones kill us. If you're too comfortable, it's got to be pretty obvious that it's too easy and we should probably change things up. To fear regret more than change, 
Nothing worse than looking back later in life and not having done the thing that you should have done. To embrace uncertainty and to know, try to know a little bit or even deep within yourself that being scared means being alive. Let's boil those four things down. Kill regret and embrace being scared. Why do that? Now here comes the random Pulitzer Prize winning poet quote. Here's the secret. All of this is actually for you, for you personally, for your job, for your life. It's how we make ourselves more fulfilled. As Mary Oliver, wonderful poet says, listen, are you breathing just a little and calling it a life? Ask yourself, or better yet, ask your younger self, would you ever think that you wanted to breathe just a little bit in life? That's why we should return to the big idea. That's why I chase it passionately every day. It's more fun, it's more interesting, and we should start right now. So I'm gonna quickly try to tie this all together and give you guys some action items over the next 24, 48 hours of things you can do that tie back to curiosity, grit, and fear, okay? Let's start today with these things. Let's explore curiosity by discovering things while we're looking for something else. How can you guys do that? Okay, there's an app on your phone or you can download it from Videonomics, right? Find one person in the app, meet them, talk about anything except work. No work, see where that curiosity leads you. Grit, scratch for some small ideas. The big ideas aren't gonna happen until you start to do that. How can you do that? Steal one idea from one brilliant person you see on today or tomorrow. Steal that idea for yourself, but here's the thing. Come up with three ideas of your own off of that idea. And the big one, fear. Jordan Peele, such an amazing talent. Let's bite off more than we can chew. I guarantee you're gonna figure something else. And here's the big one that I'm pushing for myself, and maybe you guys already do it, maybe you don't. Base 10% of your future effort on failure. The rest of this year, next year. Measure your success in 2019 on whether or not you tried to tackle your fears because every attempt is what's gonna matter most to you. Chasing the bigger idea every time is what's gonna matter most to you. I met somebody last night who is going to work on her amazing memoir with me because I wanna turn it into a movie by 2021. Um, and then I met another woman, and we're gonna to talk tonight about her becoming a stand-up comedian. She's probably not gonna become a stand-up comedian, but we'll have a few drinks and talk about her fear and my fears, and it's fun. Because the thing we have to remember through all of this is to ask ourselves if we're breathing just a little or can try, 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 try to do a little bit better and return to the big idea.